Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. 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 I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team wanna lose. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. I'm back off a of sabbatical. Ah, don't worry. Don't worry. I still got some more time. I'm going to give y'all just a little bit of love today. Then I'll be back um, on my sabbatical as I actually get a chance maybe to take a little vacation time in July. Planning to go to Bahamas, Las Vegas, Atlanta. You know, we'll do what it does. Then we'll get in the mood where it's time to get the media day, HBC media day. And then you'll see me back in the captain's chair. But let me give a kudos to uh, those that have come in the house and held it down. Obviously, very own Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Brandon has even been in the house doing things. And that's Brandon King in terms of what he's been able to do. Brian Fulford was holding down, as well as A.D. Drew, um, a couple of other gentlemen and, and ladies out there getting it done. So I want to thank them for what they've done uh, in my stead in doing incredible work to make sure that you get your HBCU sports. With that being said, welcome to episode 518 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab show and podcast, the show that's covering the sporting HBCU diaspora, all things HBCU sports. For institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along normally with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. No, I have not fired them, uh, but they're on the short list. We'll see if we can get them back. They're out there taking care of business in all seriousness, uh, getting things done in the neighborhood, if you would, as they should and could. With that being said, I invite uh, to come share the stage with me. Brian Fulford is in the house, as well as Brandon King, sneaker shop talk. I, I like that little stuff you did last week, Brandon, with that being said. Mm -hmm. Let me get the rest of the little identifiers out the way. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live. The Case Waste 1230 AM Studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. With that being said, Brian Fulford, how you doing today? I'm doing well, Doc. It's always great to be uh to be called into the lab. You know, I had to do the, a quick change, had got my got my dinner. I'm sitting there cooking a meal, and I'm like, <laughs> Doc called. I said, Oh, all right, hold on. Let me let me try not to burn up the chicken and the and all the other stuff. So Hopefully, finger. if I run away real quick, Doc, it's because my uh, stove is on fire. That's all. Oh, uh, yeah, I understand. Make sure we do that <laughs> and make sure you call you off for duty. Put up the bat signal. And here he comes. With that being said, Brandon King, how you doing today? Doing good. Doing good, Doc. And like Brian said, I'm like one of the guys in 92 when USA basketball called, I show up. Didn't matter when you called me. I got the call. So I'm here. Hey, you got the call. You're not like Caitlin Clark. So That's right. You know, you <laughs> Doc, wow. <laughs> hey, man, somebody get in. She might get the call. She get the back up. That ain't my fault. I'll just tell you. I don't even want no smoke from her friends. And if they the type of friends you have, I don't know if you want those. Some would say they're enemies. And she smoke up that, give her credit about that. She said, I don't want any parts of that. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab, Sponsored by THG Agency LLC is THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. Yeah, it took a minute, but she got it there. Let me open things up before I give y'all a chance to get in what your news of the day is. Uh, the reason I'm really here is the special unveil. It's that time, second annual release of the top six 
ADs, VPs of athletics, rankings for HBCUs at the Division I level. Still working on those Division II rankings. We'll see if maybe Brandon King wants to get his foot in there. Or, you know, AD is really that specialist at the uh, Division II and even NIA level. So we'll let him do that. And uh, maybe we'll come on and I'll join up with Brian and we'll talk about what they think in terms of the rankings at that level. With that being said, today we will unveil. In the second segment, we'll unveil the top six. So listen up. We'll see if there's any changes from last year as we did it. Uh, inaugural announcement last year. I'll see what that looks like. Speaking of HD, A -A -A ADs, uh, it's been about a week that AD, Dr. Allen, Mickey Allen, that is, of Tennessee State, Brandon King, giving you a little love out there. Uh, HBCU AD makes compelling case for better facilities to generate revenue. In a recent address, the TSU Board of Trustees, Dr. Mickey Allen, the Director of Athletics, underscored the pivotal role of infrastructure propelling the university towards greater heights. He answered questions and provided insights centered around the necessity of upgrading and expanding both athletic and residential facilities to offer a more competitive and supportive environment for student athletes. When questioned about how athletics was doing as a standalone part of the Tennessee State University, Dr. Allen uh, began to highlighting the financial challenges currently faced by the athletics department, which operates at a significant deficit. He articulated the urgent need for revenue generated facilities on campus, such as an on campus stadium. The facility he proposed and would not only ease the financial burden on the institution, but also enable TSU to host high profile events that could generate substantial revenue. Quote, we need to get revenue generating facilities on campus so we can start offsetting the brunt of institutional dollars that are going to athletics, Dr. Mickey Allen said. You know, he talked a little bit about updoing uh, Ed Temple track, uh, which is going in the right directions. He did that, meaning and they could host some, uh, host some junior AAU. I'm a little concerned, though. When I hear this magic word, I would be concerned if I was a Tennessee State alumni. They said stand alone. The only programs that I know out there in terms of athletics that can stand alone are what I now call the Super 2 conferences of the SEC and Big 12. And I'm talking about the top, top of those. Even all those programs sitting there are not standalone. They get financial support from the institution. So anytime I start hearing the standalone, you know, I kind of hear that stuff over there in Florida with FAMU. And I'm amazed at what fam you can do because I know what it means when you say institute standalone and you can't subsidize uh, athletic programs. Um, obviously, we know you don't have state support. That's Texas. A lot of institutions do that. Tennessee, Florida, you know, to name a few of them or where you can't get state subsidies. But when you are having a board that is mandated, whether it's state-wise or internal that says that you can't use other subsidy beyond a certain point to help support athletics, that is a major concern because that means now the brunt goes to the athletic director to be very imaginative and they're going to have to get into some sponsorship. And while we as fans often think that sponsors grow on trees, and we ain't talking about those mom and pops. That are not, we talk, not talking about those fish shells. We're talking about significant sponsors which means they're going to be looking to see what you're doing with your current fan base and what we've seen for football last year, averaging just under 3,000 fans. That's a significant concern by Tennessee State. And I know y'all have your own framework of how y'all see the world, but I'm just telling you from my experience studying this, looking at the data, that should be something that chills you all and has you all very concerned in the marketplace. If, the way they're defining standalone is what I've seen it defined before. So, Randy King, on your private time, I got a homework assignment. You need to go find out what does Tennessee State mean when they say it's standalone so you can report back. You With that being it. said, uh, Brian, I won't put you under the bus. I'll let you sit that out. I did that. You don't, you know, you fine. You don't have to worry about your folks beating you up in one way or the other to put that on Dr. Field. My shoulders are broad. You know, I, hey, and we'll see when we release this top six, how many ADs and VPs going to be texting and calling me. With that being said, Brian, go ahead. What's your news of the day? 
uh, you know, it's funny, Doc. I, 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 you're talking about Tennessee State, and I was just praising Tennessee State for their video that they released about uh, the game day, you know, game day ticket, you know, I- information. And Brandon, I, I'm sure you've seen that. Um, mm-hmm. I, I thought it was very well informed. Uh, my sister's a Tennessee State alum, so I instantly shot that. Her, I'm like, man, I wish my school would do that. We got all kinds. Of, anyway, I'm not gonna get into that. But uh, yeah, you <laughs> know, was, I, I will say this: it was a great marketing it, and branding it informational piece. Yes, it was. It was. And then I heard, and then I read back those quotes, and I'm like, mm, ooh, okay. But anyway, uh, <laughs> my news, uh, my news of the day, Doc. I'm gonna go with uh, a matchup. That was announced just the other day featuring two historic football, college football programs. And these are blue bloods. I would say, you know, not only amongst the HBCU, but I would just say in college football general. I mean, I think when you think of HBCUs, one of the first names you come to is Grambling. I think just in the general college football sphere, I think you say Ohio State. So Grambling State. Uh, Athletic Communications released just the other day that for the first time in school history, the Grambling State University football team will travel to Columbus, Ohio to take on Ohio State on September 6, 2025. It will be the first time that GSU faces a member of the Big Ten Conference, uh, assumingly also the first time that they're playing Ohio State. Um. This matchup, I, I think, you know, when you look at the historic context of these two programs, uh, you have Grambling State, which is won 27 Southwestern Athletic Conference championships and 16 black college national titles. Uh, I even looked this up. Ohio State has won 39 Big Ten championships. Now, they have claimed now watch this doc watch the terminology here they have claimed (laughs) eight national titles but there are seven unclaimed national titles credit to ohio state so i look so i don't know you do the math and you could say 15 national titles but they only claim eight and there's seven i don't don't know you know but anyway uh a historic matchup uh i'm sure there's a lot of money that's involved in this. Um, One million dollars at least is what they're saying. At, at least, hopefully, at least a million with expenses covered. Um, but I also think it'll also bring up that debate. It's already started by some folks about is this good for Grambling State? And and most people, they're probably a large. You say no. There's a, probably a lot of people that say no. I will... I will stand on the other side of that line and say the exposure, which is unparalleled to anything that Grambling State football, all due respect to the Bayou Classic, it is unparalleled to anything that they will experience. The atmosphere, The first, secondly, we already talked about the money, unparalleled, uh, probably unparalleled. It may be equal close to maybe i don't know but it's still significant for one game and then the third thing the young men who have aspirations of playing in the nfl that game against ohio state will be the game that is sort of used as a measuring stick by nfl scouts to see how they perform okay so i understand that's the pro obviously the con there will be people who say like like you may be shaking your head thinking is the risk of potential injuries and thing like that Is it worth it? You know, is potentially losing by 60 points worth it? I, you know, I, there's the trade off. So I get it. I get it. But I still think as a college football fan, I think it's pretty cool and it should be a great experience. And hopefully, uh, like Tennessee State fans did, my sister was part of the Tennessee State contingent that went to Notre Dame for that historic game. I hope Grambling State fans travel to Columbus, Ohio. To experience game day in C bus. Yeah, I'll add this. Mine is not so much about injuries. I think football is a game of injuries, and you know, that's not my biggest framework. I do agree with you, as you said, exposure is extremely important. Um, and that the exposure that goes with having your name out there could be intriguing. I'm not sure though that the exposure equates to what they get with the Bayou Classic, with that being back on NBC. 
uh, Universal. This, I would imagine, is probably going to be on the Big Ten Network, not their NBC or Fox uh, in terms of CBS deal that they have uh, aligned. So I would be interested to see if that's the case. That may change my mind if that's the, but I would imagine the Big Ten Network in terms of what it broadcasts to, to the NBC is not comparable. So sometimes we need to think about that and kind of look at apples to apples. But to your other point in terms of that, they're still going to play the Bayou Classic. So really you're comparing it to what other non-conference game they have. Uh, which would be against another program. Uh, the million is significant, but oftentimes I wonder how much is that going to really balance the budget or is it how much of that is going to go back to the program, them to be able to invest in the program and build on it. If they're going to do that. That That is one thing that uh, makes me look a little different about that opportunity. But my experience is much of that goes back into the overall budget, which is the budget that you're front loaded by the university, meaning you're paying that back just like you would do in a credit card. So the, the investment may not be there. Those are the inside questions that I really look at. Uh, Prairie View is playing, I think, Michigan State. So I get kudos because the money that Prairie View is getting is not anywhere close to what Ohio State gets. I would put the caveat out there because I'm always open about this, that we need to be clear when we're doing these delineations. Part of this game was a game that was canceled. So Ohio State needed a game, which is going to drive up. Uh, the the money because their need was there. And so you put them in a little bit of pickle. So that's going to be a little bit of the differentiation. Obviously, when they played FAMU many years ago, you, they're thrust a million dollars. They have a larger venue so they can pay out more to get what they want. So you got to think about that space there. But my biggest thing is, is about the brand, the brand awareness. I think it really deteriorates the brand. Um, and that's my biggest concern in terms of you trying to get people to connect to your brand outside of the, your key folks, and that becomes a major issue. Uh, but maybe we'll get a chance to talk about this a little on the back end. I did want to be fair and give Brandon the floor because we're a little bit behind on the schedule before we do this release, but we'll do it as a good tease. So if you would, Brandon, kind of quickly get into what you wanted to share that's on your mind in terms of news today. Well, <laughs> Brian took the one I had, and, and you've already – uh covered one so i'm i'm just gonna be kind of brief the uh the MEAC announced their uh espn uh televised games earlier today and out of the 55 regular season games 82 percent or about 45 are going to be shown and the first one uh will be the MEAC swag challenge on saturday august the 24th which will feature Brian's FAMU Rattlers against the Spartans of Notre Dame, followed by Delaware and Hawaii on CBS later that evening. And it concludes. The Spartans of Norfolk State, man, they're going to beat you up. You call them Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> but we already, we, we beat up on them when they came down to Nashville, so they'll be okay. Oh, you did? You did? Wow. So maybe that, maybe did. that was purposeful. I see what you did it, there. It was. <laughs> It was. <laughs> oh, wow. My fault. My fault. I, I, I run from no smoke. smoke. Yeah, you give me smoke. No. I like that. <laughs> you deserve this smoke. Look, it's so, it, it's so rare that I get to talk a little trash. So anytime I get to, <laughs> I am not going to let that opportunity I know, slip by I know. me at all. Touche, you're right. When you get a chance. <laughs> And they they gonna let you know it because y'all still oh yeah say, if we would have lost we'd still be hearing about it. oh we yeah was, oh that's for sure for sure but let's get into our next break we'll come back on the other side and get a little talk and talk about this top six um and see we might bring in another guest to do that with us so let's take our first break and come back on the other side. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational. Powerhouse. 
intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. No. No. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love ya. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We brought in Mr. Kyle Mosley to jump in here and check on us. Uh, how's it going, Kyle? What's going on, Doc? How you feeling? Uh, I look forward to seeing your thoughts in regards to my ADVP poll rankings. So I'm doing well. I'm excited. It's time mm -hmm. to end the year. You got SWAC meetings closing up today where they were returning out checks. Last week, the MEAC gave out checks. Brandon, when does the OVC give out checks? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. There's a little quiet on there. Uh, I asked my other friends over there in Colonia. I mean, Coastal. Um, <laughs> well, they did just a little conference little over there and see if a and in Hampton, see if they got checks. Well, yeah. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? It's the first time being able to see you, Doc. Pretty good. How you doing, Mr. Mosley? Good, good. How you oh, doing? You know, look, I didn't realize you had your Tennessee State shirt on. You represent us, right? Of course. Oh, yeah. oh I, see. I always got to represent. Right. I'm not mad. <laughs> Y'all good. <laughs> Get you some more wins, though. Uh, with that being said, oh my God. <laughs> with that being said, Not let me break down with the poll ranking. Let's look forward to getting the top six and get everybody's thought and see where Brandon AD is on the list. See where Brian's AD is on the list. Kyle Mosley, I apologize. Ah. We hadn't did the do D2 mid-major NIA pro rankings. So I might join you when you do those top six to see who's out there. And you, I'll share that with you and let you unveil that. We said AD might do it. We'll see what that looks like. But this is for the major division. So that's the first thing. I don't want people to think that we're not looking at those because there's some ADs and VPs of athletics at the Division II NIA level that are doing tremendous work. So kudos for them as well. But the breakdown, this is real important because a lot of folks, you know, popularity contests, band rankings and votings, we, we don't do that over here. Uh, Brian is an AD is similar about that. You know, they do a analysis in terms of computer rankings and they get beat up all the time and they got to remind folks, it's the computer folks. It's the computer. It's not how you feel inside about your institution. This is similar, but I'm a breakdown in terms of what goes into the ranking. First, this is your all sport. How did you do in your all sport? Where did you finish in your all sport? You get points. How are you finished at the top? More points, you finish lower, that's less. What did you do in terms of your men's sports? You get rankings for that. What do you do for your women's sports? You get rankings for that because I wanted to break that down to make sure we see the overall viability of an athletic program, which means we also included facilities. Have you doing new facilities? Are you updating facilities? Are you getting new things in your facilities? Uh, that helps in turn your ranking. So I cover and I look all of that information. I have some ADs and VPs that have kindly sent me updates. So I know specifically things that they're doing that sometimes hits the media. Maybe it's high, maybe it's low. 
So I get that information. It goes in there. I go through the websites to make sure that stuff is covered. Uh, bottom line, though, you got to win. Did you win a football championship? Did you win a women's basketball championship? Did you win a men's basketball championship? Did you win men's baseball? Did you win softball? Now, some of y'all out there are saying, hey, my program doesn't have baseball. That's not my fault. Donate some more money and get your team with some baseball. That's not my fault. That's what a sports program is about. You don't have the sports. You don't have cross country. That's not my fault. You don't have tennis. Donate some more money to your program because you see the state is not going to do it. Brandon just told us about that. Brandon's AD said the state's not going to give you a dime on that. So you need to work on that. We also look at your overall in terms of basketball, since there's financial support in that. We look at the tournament versus the regular season, men's and women's. You get points on those rankings. Uh, baseball, softball, we just look at the tournament since they're in divisions. For baseball, we didn't go through that mounting. And so you get all that. And then there's a line in there that also looks at things that may be outside of that. So without further ado, let's get in the top six. I'm going to go through this. It'll be about time for us to take another break. We'll take the break, come back on the other side, and then I'll get your thoughts in terms of thumbs up or thumbs down. Bulls up in terms of what it looks like. Bears down. We'll see where you land up. Top six. At number six, Dr. Kevin Granger, Texas Southern University Tigers. Dr. Kevin Granger dropped the ranking. Last year, he was at number five. He dropped the ranking, 71.38, I think, not winning a basketball championship, although they played in for men's on the final, not being up at the top in the regular season. Certainly hurt where he was. Uh, where he finished overall sports trophy, obviously with a lot of help on the men's side, they were at the top of the SWAC. And a lot of that was kudos to what they did, track and field, both indoors, outdoors, and cross country, cross country getting the triple crown, if you allow me to use that phrase, in uh, track and field. So with that, that edges him and allows him to stay in the top six, even though he falls one spot. And number five, Dr. Travion Scott, Ramblin' State Tigers. They were not ranked. He finds his way into the top six uh, in this second inaugural, excuse me, second annual poll ranking at 72.73. What they did, men's basketball with their championship, finishing second uh, on the women's side, uh, really helped him in terms of the regular season. In basketball, obviously getting the baseball championship uh, went a long way, but not finishing very well in track and field. Obviously, football, you see that hurt him. They actually made a change in the head coaching position. So that makes sense because that was really hurting him. Facilities, they've done a lot of things quietly on the facility. Inside that facility, uh, uh, Updating with the uh, uh, football field in terms of what they're doing down there in terms of some facilities there. That helps as well. We'll see where that goes moving forward. At number four, Dr. Jason Cable, Alabama State Hornets. Uh, they He falls two spots. As he was really edging out and in the ranking there, he falls a little bit this year, uh, getting a lot of things done quietly behind the scenes, but the championships across the board, Really hurt him, particularly in some of those big-time sports, football, men's basketball, women's basketball, following a little further behind. It's hurt him getting it done. Softball taking some deep runs there a little bit, even though they moved in a different direction with softball. They're interesting. 84.31 points. So he is at number four. And number three, women enter into the fray. Melody Webb of Norfolk State Spartans. Uh, previous rank two, so she does fall a spot, uh, but still getting it done uh, in terms of those rank. I should say she actually stays at number three, 87.62 in terms of where she is. Obviously doing a lot of good things, track and field, they're getting it done in the MEAC, right in the top of those standings. You know what they've done, women's basketball, men's basketball regular season, got it done not so well in the tournament, so that hurt a little bit but really in the mix there. At number two, we get a new coach coming in. Uh, overall, 
All sports is very healthy there, plays in the top rankings, uh, some championships across the board there, but finds a way to remain uh, in the top spot, top part of the uh, rankings, I should say, at number two, although did fall one spot. We got a new number one. Number one this year is outside of the SWAC, outside of the independent, is Kerry Davis, Howard Bison. Jumps up four spots to get to the number one ranking and really outpaces a lot of folks. If you look at that score, 96.69. Banner year in terms of what they've done in NEC, what they've done obviously in the MEAC uh, with championships uh, on many directions, getting it done in various sports, football, getting to the Celebration Bowl, knocking out North Carolina Central uh, that many people thought would be getting it done. Uh, so a lot of championships on both sides of the ball. So a lot of high rankings for Howard across the board in athletics, um, getting it done in terms of what they did in track and field. So ultimately, number one is Kerry Davis. With that being said, number six, Dr. Kevin Granger of Texas Southern University. At number five, Dr. Travian Scott, Grambling State University. And number four, Dr. Jason Cable. Alabama State University. At number three, Melody Webb, Norfolk State University. At number two, Ashley Robinson, Jackson State University. And number one, Kerry Davis of Howard University rounds out the top six to give it to you. We'll take our break here and see what these individuals said about the ADVP ranking. Who did I miss out on? Who should be further up in their thought process? Who should be further down? And outrank, some of them might say somebody shouldn't be in the top six at all. They want them out of there. We'll see you on the other side. Stick with us after this break. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell leadership principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to allow that. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. They're out on assignment, so we have none other than Brian Fulford, Brandon King, and Kyle T. Mosley, as he, they like to call people's champ, as they like to call it. With that being said, uh, Brian, you are the one able to keep a straight face, so I'm going to actually save you for last. Look, they stole on you. I wonder so why. Go, usually we make the young person wait, Kyle. You know, 
you know, some of y'all folks that are familiar with them hazing things. Oh, that's right. We can't say that no more. We don't, we not saying that there ain't no hazing. So we're going to let the young person, as we used to force them to go last, we're going to allow the youngest one of the group to go first. We're going to let him mix it up and get in there. Yep, no, no PV in the mix, no fam you in the mix. So you can't say that this is something that just I made up and I like my PV folks. I will say fam you and PV were in the top 10, uh, but this is the top six. So I don't mention your name if, you, if you're not in the top six. You got to do some work. Now you're not far off. You're top 10. You're not too bad. The football championship fam you helped out quite a bit. You know, a couple of other championships there. In your Olympic sports, as we talked about, that's all in there as well. But you got to put in a little more work. You got to you got to do some various things to get in here in the rankings. And all I do is put data to the pen. No championships, I put them in the paper, calculate it up, and that's where my points come from. You win championships, you add a little facility things, you put in some work, you get recognized. Now, I'm not saying this. Some of y'all have presidents, chancellors, and they're happy with what you're doing. I'm not saying that you don't deserve a contract extension. That's not what this ranking is about. This ranking is about whether you have championship. So, Brandon, tell Mickey Allen, keep working. Get those facilities. <laughs> get in the top six. I'm sorry about that. Long, go ahead, Brandon. What you got? We got a long way to go to crack the top 30. And I'm being, <laughs> I'm being generous. Hey, but 21. Hey, but 21 or 22, <laughs> Brady. you like top 30. Good <laughs> Lord. He said we got <laughs> problems behind some D2 programs. I see <laughs> but let me stop for they, before they don't answer my emails no more. Um, you sure right. <laughs> be good. They're um, all watching, Brandon. <laughs> so, now, let me, let me simmer down a little bit. Um. But looking at the list, um, and you kind of touched on a little bit already, Doc. I'm so I'm actually surprised. I thought that the fam you would have made an appearance, considering, like I said, the the football championship. I know they had some, I believe, uh, in baseball, and they had some good showings in some other sports. But I know uh, they had some some issues, and, and Brian could speak to this in terms of women's basketball that didn't the season didn't. You know they they didn't quite ball out so so some, I'm assuming some of those other sports men basketball was it. on the uptick. It was men's basketball. You talking about? They wow, I got mixed up. You're right. You got mixed up. I know what you talking up. about. Men's basketball. Yeah, that hurt it. I, that's right. Thank you for for clearing that. Get get me back on on track. So um, I'm assuming some of those other sports may have dragged that that ranking down um, and, and kept them out of the top six. But when you go through, they don't have and, women's and, soccer. You can't get points. You don't like have a sport. You, like I said, if you don't have it, you can't get credit for it. It's it's like leaving it's like leaving an answer blank on on the exam. You can't get no. You don't get credit for that, brother Brian. You can't Brian, answer God, the question. He's a fam. You got. He say facilities gonna keep us in trouble. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like folks like that. I like fans like that. Are honest and front forward. You know, it's one thing to win championship top smack, but where you not where you want to be. Be like, hey, we, we got some work to do. I appreciate it. Go ahead, Brent. But I like I said going through, um, but I think outside of that, I think the list is is fairly solid. And you've touched on a lot of the points when you look at um what Kerry Davis is doing at Howard in terms of um it's specifically the football program. Um in, in some ways to a, to to people who may not be familiar, feel like they may have come out of nowhere. Uh, to come into the, the celebration bowl, but you look at some of the the uh, the, the teams that they have in place there. Um, it's easy to understand why they are there. Um, looking down to, to Ashley Robinson, and, and even with <clears throat> the departure of of Coach Sanders, and they were able to fairly keep seven and four uh, to keep the things rolling down there. We saw what uh, the ladies' basketball team was doing. And I, I really think, looking at even on, on the men's side, um, Coach Williams is, is still able to field a very competitive team from the, on the basketball standpoint. So you look at a lot of the major sports down there at Jackson, uh, they're doing a great job. Um, I'm, I'm going to be nice, Norfolk. Um, Norfolk State Spartans, I'm going to make sure I say it right. I don't, I, um, but, uh, again, you look at uh, – oh, go ahead, Doc, I'm sorry. 
No, I'm just saying they're gonna come get you. They're gonna fill up your Twitter. <laughs> box. Watch. I've been at this for a minute. Take, you better have some fix. I might want to. I might want to uh, block out my my social media handle so they can't they can't reach out and, <laughs> and touch me on the internet. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm going to be nice. They show it. I'm going to be nice. Ask you I'm one question as you close it up, so we I can get the crowd. No, I want I want to oh, ask you this question though, because you talked about family. This is the tough part that I always say. You know, people say I want somebody here. I want something on. I want who you taking out? If you putting fam you in, who you dropping out? Is that for me? Yeah. That's, 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 oh. You said oh, fam you might have been in there. So if fam you's in uh, there, who you taking out? Honestly, I would probably slide out Texas Southern and okay. slide fam you in. Um and like I said, I know that, that, that some of the other uh, teams may not have been winning, but they were a lot closer in terms of, obviously, if they're at the mountaintop, if we're looking just at football, uh, or not just looking at football, but they're a lot closer um, in, in a lot of their sports in some cases than, than Texas Southern is. So with that being said, I would kind of slide them out and, and if I was looking for a change to make. But outside of that, I think the list is pretty solid. I can't really find much fault with it. It makes sense. Now I understand why he said top 30, because he weighs football quite a bit. <laughs> and what they doing in football, even though they started off hot and kind of fell out, that's why he said Tennessee State, historically <laughs> where they want to be in football is not there. So now it all makes sense. Dude, he got a big deal on football, and now, now that adds up. But, Kyle, let me go to you. Top six. Kyle, I know you do a lot of work in these areas. You look at data a lot of different ways. You work with ADs. You call them. You're on the forefront when the coaching hires are being made. So I'm very intrigued to see what are your thoughts, because I'm sure you have some different measures that you might sneak in there that creates a different framework. But in terms of what I got here in terms of top six, where are you on the list? Top two, I don't have a problem. I was surprised that FAMU did not make it. And, Coach, I, I guess I'm on your side there. <laughs> uh, but to be honest with you, man, um, when talking to Dr. Granger, he did lay out exactly what the Tigers were able to do as an athletic department this season. He was pretty proud at the track championships. Uh, the golf team performed pretty well as well. And uh, he he looked at everything, and I thought number six is probably where they they were. You know, no major championships. The football team just did not perform well, uh, especially toward the end of the season. And but I was surprised that Grambling was positioned at number five, and I was surprised at the Norfolk State. Spartans being at number three, and uh, that was a shock. I, I need to go back and, and be able to look at what happened with their program and what how they were able to get some championships. We know the basketball programs do pretty well there, uh, but Coach Odoms has been struggling football wise, you know, and that's a surprise to have them positioned there. I haven't heard much other than uh, I think they're. Do they have tennis? I think their tennis team did pretty good, right? Uh, and the golf team was okay. So, but I thought Alabama State would have been probably number two or number three, in my opinion. So uh, that's just how I saw it. And obviously, Coach, you know, uh, Dr. Cavill put some of these numbers together, and I thought Tiffany Dawn's Sykes did a, a great job this season as an athletic director. And so that's just my thoughts. Um, well, while, while we're waiting on uh, Doc, uh, he's uh, got a little technical difficulty, so he'll be back in, in a second. Um, I'm, I'm not going to touch the fam. You got, I know everyone in the chat room <laughs> looking like, oh, I know Brian's got a rebuttal. He's got to say something. He's got to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I Come on, Coach, Coach, you can – since Doc's out, it's just us. Brandon and I, we won't tell anything. Right, Brand? That's right. <laughs> I, see, what, what I love – see, I knowing Doc long enough, what I know is 
Doc, there are so many other things that Doc looks at <laughs> outside of just the performance on the field right. uh, and courts. And obviously, I think outside of men's basketball, uh, I think FAMU in practically every sport had a good year. You know, some teams winning conference championships. Oh, let me let me back up. Some winning national championships. Some winning conference championships. Some winning division championships. Some teams getting to the championship game. So all that's great. But then you look at, uh, as we've already had, uh, uh, Byron uh, say, we got facility issues. And then when you look at the the the, the murky mess and just, you know, there's a lot of, and I don't know if, if that gets counted against you uh, in this respect. You know, some I mean, obviously, new hires and how that's, how that's all. I don't know if that plays against you in something like this. So if we just if, – if we're like number seven, and I don't know if Doc will necessarily reveal who is number seven, but if we are number seven, I understand us being out of the top um, – being out of the top. <laughs> Six, you know what I'm saying? Well, uh, this just makes me think: is the FAMU facilities just that poor right now? Uh, they yeah, they're, just they're, need to. There are some facilities, and I think we got Dot back as well. There are some facilities that are very poor. Uh, baseball, for one, uh, and, and when I say probably poor in comparison to our SWAC brethren. I, I think of baseball. I think of uh, the tennis facilities. Now, I don't know what everybody else's tennis facilities look like. Um, you know, uh, the, the, we, we probably play in the nicest basketball arena, but, you know, in terms of, you know, for, for, for how does that affect volleyball? Attendance isn't great. So, I mean, all those things, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but... I know we're struggling in some areas. And so, uh, hmm. yeah, so, you know, those, those are just softball probably needs uh, some upgrades to its facility. So, like I said, if if Doc said that we're right outside of the top six, I could buy it. Hmm. I'm, I could buy it. But what's a bigger question to me, and this is what, as, as Doc was going through this and I was circling and jotting notes, uh, if you notice, if there's a lot of movement, slight movement, one, two spots, <clears throat> But Howard University moved from four to one. That is a significant <laughs> jump. That's that's the kind of jump, Kyle, that people will be talking about because, look, who has the most FBS transfers going into this upcoming SWAC football season? <clears throat> but when that team rolls 10, 11 wins this year, people are going to say, whoa, they were better than last year. How does that happen? So that's the equivalent I'm using here, Doc. How does Howard? So, so you're saying Howard is better? Than, um, I'm sorry. Or I'm is just saying. You? I, don't, I want I want <laughs> Doc to quantify uh, how Howard moves from four to one. That is a huge. That's like hold on. How far, how far can my hands fit in this screen? That's you like know, from, they're in the ninety percentile too. There. Yeah, that, that's you know? a. Significant yeah, jump, yeah. man. What did Doc? What did Howard do that was so significant that they jumped three spots? Did it man, happen when I, he came back from you, DC? You're not the only person that was surprised. When I ran the numbers, I reran the numbers. <laughs> I <was> like what? <laughs> I was so, so Doc. I mean, from a layman's standpoint. Everybody looks at championships, and everybody yep. says, "Oh, the championships way heavy," but there are other measurables and metrics that you use. Just explain that for people. Yeah, the obviously the championships uh way heavy, and we kind of probably didn't realize just how many championships Howard won. So the total number of championships helped them, but really what helped them is the fact when they didn't win a championship in the sport, they were finishing second or third. Wow. So they got a lot of points for being at the top of various sports in their program would hurt them some think about this they don't have baseball hmm. <laughs> now they have a lot of other sports um that are not necessarily calculated <clears throat> individually but it works in terms of the olympic sports so like they, swimming yeah swimming 
So they got the benefit in terms of, of winning championships in those sports. It was only in a singular area, so they didn't get multiple points for it, but they uh, indexed really high at number 10 in terms of what they did in their overall program, how they performed finishing with championships or at the top. The other thing they did is they've done some upgrades to some facilities around there. Uh, and anybody knows with Howard, that was desperate need in terms of what he did with the renovations in terms of the basketball arena, uh, renovations to the locker room area. Those are things that, you know, they'll put a, a blip out there, but they don't necessarily get the national HBC weight in terms of media coverage. So if you're not following those things, they don't stick out to you. But those are significant because that's going to help you recruiting. And obviously it's paid off in terms of what they've been able to do for their basketball. Regular season basketball finished pretty well. Didn't do too well in terms of the tournament uh, on that side. But on the women's side, the other thing that Howard balanced was is they're probably one of the best men's to women's ratio of finishing really well. So you had some folks that index really well on the men's sports, i.e. Texas Southern, but not so well on the women's side. You have other sports. Uh, programs, Jackson State, that really index really well on the women's side, but not quite as well on the men's side, and they probably would have gave Howard a run for the money in terms of that. What Rapid about the State Spartans? made a huge jump because they weren't ranked. So you're talking about that. So the last one I talk about before I get your thoughts in terms of what I just said in terms of indexing that is Grambling. They made a huge jump. They were in the mix last year, and obviously football was off the map in some ways. But what they did in terms of men's <clears throat> basketball, where they were in terms of women's basketball, really helped them. No, not the championship, but they were right there, too, uh, in terms of what they did regular season. And then getting that big points to close out the season with basketball. But what hurt Gramlin not to finish higher, because uh, they did a lot of good things in terms of facilities, but what they're doing in their Olympic sports. Uh, women's track and field, men's track and field, they really hurt them in terms of being able to maybe be higher in the rankings of what took place. So the important part of this is while we, as you said, focus on championships and some of the individual sports, this really looks at across the board. What are you doing as an athletic director, VP, across the board in your program? And some of that was showing some championships. Some of that was showing all sports. But some of that needs to also be shown in terms of what you're doing with facilities, uh, raising funds for your institution outside of what you're doing individually. Go ahead, Kyle. Last question was about the Spartans, man. That's just tremendous to see them at number three, but everybody just knows about the basketball program doing very, very well. You know, mm -hmm. how did they get to that level? Track and field. They really do well in track and field, both on the men's and women's side. They index relatively high on both of those sports. They do both well on men's and women's in basketball to hurt them, to help them. What hurt them in terms of football, in terms of that. And I also want to give kudos to Webb because she's the only uh, woman that's made that top list. Now, there are a couple of other ones that are in the top ten that need to focus on that are uh, putting in some work. But to get in that top six, Webb, and that's two years in a row. Uh, so credit and kudos to her. Uh, in terms of what she's doing in Norfolk State. If they can get a turn from football, which will be interesting since they're in that MEAC SWAC champions uh, a challenge, they have a chance to make a statement with a program that's in the top 10 ranking as well. Obviously, they got all the kudos that they deserve by get ultimately winning the championship in a national black college football championship in football next year. So it indexed real quick to start things off for the third annual uh, ranking. Uh, there's a lot of things to go in between what that looks like uh, in terms of those ADs, VPs that are getting it done. All right. Good stuff, man. Can, can, I, ask one, can I ask one more question, Doc? Because I was looking yeah, at – so what I, – I, and looking at the slight difference between Texas Southern and Grambling, and, I mean, we're talking a, less than a point between 6th hmm. and 5th. Right. Right. Is there more value in winning men's basketball and baseball than doing what Texas Southern did in track and field cross country? Or do, are all wins, are all championships 
value the same, same, or is there slight differences? No, they're always the same. You know, okay. it essentially 10 points um, from that point in rankings, you get that highest points for winning first, and then it descends based on where you finish in terms of your rankings. Now, uh, men's track, even though men's and women's track is actually three sports, I only give a point for one, but obviously uh, to get it all together, um, that helps you making sure that you get that 10 points and stay at the top in terms of rankings. So across the board, no, um, they're all ranked the same, nominal. And that's why while in people's minds, football and basketball may weigh heavier in terms of fan supports and bragging points, but in terms of your overall ranking of what you're doing for your program, uh, all the other sports are just as important as well. Now, as far as media is concerned, Brandon, <laughs> and as well as access, that's one thing I would like to see uh, some media guys actually talk about how these programs interact with the media side. And because I think you will have some differences in rankings there. Uh, but it also would also get enlightened some people that ADs, VPs of athletics, and everybody else still have a di so many different things they have to balance from a day-to-day -day basis to be able to perform their job well. Yeah, I and totally agree with you. Well, I want to take this last break, Kyle. I want to thank you for joining us. I know you got another thank you guys. One. Once we get out of this break, I have one final question for Brian and Brandon, and then we'll let you out of here as we close up the show. But I'd like to take this final break and ask a little bit, get a little tease in here and ask you, what do you think about changing the name of a conference where are you with that are we prepared mentally for that at the hbcu level stick with be right back after this last break since 2002 empowerment resources inc a nonprofit organization has empowered more than 1500 youth and adults in duval and surrounding counties through its programs journey into womanhood girls mentoring life skills for teens and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. And pay attention, boy, because he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Ville with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. <clears throat> We're done other than Brian Fulford and Brandon King. As I promised, I wanted to get this last one in here and just get your thoughts on this before we call it a final show. Um, our conference is naming rights, the future of HBCUs. Obviously, this was coming out of HBCUsports.com, giving them credit in terms of what they put out there. In the world of NCA, you probably heard uh, the reports by Ross Dillinger of Yahoo Sports College Football 
as he talked about this past Thursday, the Big 12 Conference and even Conference USA are considering potential naming rights. We've heard this all the time, but not for a stadium, not for a basketball arena, not for a football field, a baseball uh, stadium, right? Not on a basketball court, but for a conference, the conference, Big 12. Um, they are sponsored heavily, for example, by All State. Uh, would it be the uh, All State 12 or Dr. Pepper 12? Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of what that looks like? Conference USA is the SWAC, MIAC, C I double A S I A C, or the changing from the GCAC um, in terms of the HBCU Athletic Conference, HBCU AC. Are uh, they prepared to change? Can you look for the Southwestern Athletic? conference being known as the Southwestern Airlines Athletic Conference. Brandon, what are your thoughts in terms of that? Is this a place where we're ready in terms of fans, more importantly, presidents and chancellors, are they prepared uh, to sign off on getting a sponsor to change the name of a conference? 1920 for the swag now. 1920 <clears throat> for the well, that would be 1912, 1913, for the CIAA and SIAC, you know, over 100 years for three of those conferences, over 50 years for the other. Well, I think you you, you touched on a lot of, uh, from a historical standpoint, I think you would get a lot of pushback from that. And <clears throat> I look at it almost as the, the potential NASCARification of <laughs> college athletics. Because and, and I'm a, I'm a old NASCAR fan. How old? I still say Winston Cup. I don't know who sponsors it now, but and I think if you ever got to the point where it would, you know, it would it would be, you know, the Nabisco uh, Mid Eastern Athletic Conference or whatever the case may be, you would still, for from a fan standpoint, they're still going to use the the same terminology that they always have for years. That part is not going to change. Um, at a core level, because that's what they grew up with. That's what it's always been. That's what it will continue to be. Now, on the official side, it would get some some uh, some adjustment, I'll say. Um, but I think, from in terms of campus presidents and, and people in those uh, positions or seats of power, I think that if they're not ready, they they'd better have an eye on what's going on. Because in some ways, I look at it like this, that with the, as you called it, the big two, it's almost like the, the, the California of, of, of college athletics. You know how some, as California goes in some things, it will eventually trickle its way into to a lot of areas of the country. Um, we could, we could def they should definitely have an eye on that and, and pay attention to that. Because once we're, we're talking about the, the Tesla Big 12 conference it, it's only a, a matter of time and and especially and then I'll, I'll land my plane here especially with these big conferences looking to for lack of a better term consolidate power and i think trying to figure out a way to squeeze the ncaa out for for us and our leagues we better be paying attention to it to make sure we don't you know get left holding the proverbial bag so to speak good stuff good stuff brian what do you say I, I, I'm I'm all for it, I, and I hope that uh, Dr. Charles McClellan uh, and, and the other commissioners. I hope they are ready uh, to to as uh, as Brandon said, the NASCARification. I want to see logos everywhere. I want to see them <laughs> on the uniforms. I want to see them on the fields. I want the first down marker to be sponsored by this company. I want I want to see <laughs> logos on the first down marker. I want the touchdown to be sponsored by this company. Look, whatever it's going to take to raise the money. I told you many a times I felt like college athletics is a recession-proof industry. And before the bubble burst, don't know when it'll happen, Doc, but history yeah. tells us that eventually it will, right? Right. When? When? Let Get in now. You know, I, I, I tweeted this out. I don't know if we're going to call it the Pepsi swack. The Coca-Cola MIAC, the Cricket <laughs> SIAC, the Nationwide CIAA. I don't care. Whatever, whatever. Please get some money that you can give to these schools to help them 
grow. Now, the question is, though, because if I if I was looking at the article that uh, Brett McMurphy sent, he said that um, he says that uh, Allstate was working on a deal anywhere between 30 to 50 million. Right. For the Big 12. What is the worth of the SWAT? Is it? I don't know, 10 to 15 million. Is that too low? Is that just right? That that's the main question. What what is it worth to rename your conference by said company? You know, I and I, I think this is this is a great question that I think uh all of the conferences have to try to put value on. Um and and look with with all of the I mean Brandon said the Miac is going to be what fifty five some odd games on the ESPN network of families I think the SWAT kind of has a similar number if I recall it, it was somewhere in the fifties um, I mean that's a significant number of games that that will have a a large potential audience base so mm-hmm. I I just think you got to take advantage while while you can and while you already have these corporate sponsors get them get them get them get them now while you can you know um just my thoughts good points good points on both sides and i think you all um have the arguments down in terms of the way people feel on both sides of the issue mm-hmm. you know some people are like hey let's jump all in head first uh sink or swim let's go at it and you got other folks say hey hold on let me put my toe in the water a little bit, and they want to ease on in there, if at at all. A little concern. Um, so that's fascinating when you look at it like that. And, and so I'm intrigued. In terms of your question, in terms of data, I've done some analysis that looked at, like, potential sponsors based on what happened with the previous sponsors or folks leaving um, a conference. The value of folks, of what you would say Tennessee State joining the media, if you would. Uh, what does that look like for Clark Atlanta uh, joining a conference or Morehouse joining the MEAC or even A&T uh, joining the SWAC from that perspective? What does it look like uh, from these uh, institutions or when they left? I've done some calculation and I have a valuation for each of these institutions. I got to decide when I want to put that out there because for some folks, I think it's going to make them really nervous. For other folks, they're going to be uh, quite concerned and some folks will be happy for what those numbers represent. Uh, but I'm pretty comfortable with what's out there. So thinking about that, the other one, uh, before we close up, I did want to say this in regards to those super two, as I like to call them, the Big Ten um, and the SEC in terms of where they are as power conferences. Obviously, they still call them in the media uh, the power four since all uh, but two of the schools have essentially killed what we knew as the Pac-12 and still call them the autonomous four in terms of the NCA language. Uh, but I think sometimes we forget, uh, if you really look at the data, um, that autonomous four controls like 95 plus percent of the revenue coming out of the NCA. They control that. And we've just seen for with the last legislation of this court where they forced the other D1 schools essentially in basketball, even though this was in a lot of ways a football issue, is that they're going to pay 60% of the money of that deal. But even if you look at it just from a revenue and expense, those schools um, get a lot more of the revenue coming out of the NCA from basketball, but the expense side of it, they expense goes to everybody and they sharing those expenses. So there's no need to leave the NCA. Anytime they get mad, all they do is threaten to leave and they go back and they get another half percent and grow richer. So I, I don't see them leaving particularly before 32, before the basketball conference. And even with that, I just highly doubt that they're going to leave the NCA because they control it. We act like the NCA is this independent body of work. The NCA is those power brokers, those institutions that you talk about leading, they control the NCA. those presidents and chancellors. Why would you leave when you have everything control it and you have less expenses? If they leave, they got to pay 100% of the expenses. They don't pay 100% of the expenses. Yeah, they get all the revenue. They still get 95% of the revenue. Now, yeah, they would get five more percent, but think about what they're increasing on the expense side of the ledger. It's just not a good business decision. 
they're not going anywhere. They'll just threaten a little more, stomp their feet and get mad. They'll get another half percent. Before you know it, they'll be at 99, 98%. Um, and so they'll be they'll shut up for another year until you give them another half percent to get them closer to where they want to go. With that being said, we'll close it up the show. Appreciate you sharing and getting some love. It was good back to being here, but I'm going to go back in the slender, quiet, and watch you all do what you all do, uh, giving everybody and make sure I get some time to do some other things. So I want to say thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the college sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop, but with special guests today, Brian Fulford and Brandon King. Uh, as you see, I have my son here. He wanted to make sure he said hello as he got out of his camp. <laughs> Getting ready. He wanted to make sure he get a little show time as he was here having to listen to the show. I appreciate him. With that being said, again, I want to thank you for listening to Dr. Viz inside the HBC Sports Lab. Appreciate all the lab listeners. Continue to get it, spread the love and getting the information out there and always checking on me behind the scenes. All is well, just putting it to work as we do on the Dean side of stuff. Uh, so thank you. Check us out every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. Right here, you know what we do. It's getting close to the football. We'll give you those updates, give you some predictions, get you what you need and what you want. So make sure you continue to check. Here, if you would, um, or whether that's Brian and AD on the Sports Wrap, ONG Strike Zone, as they do on Wednesday. Brandon King, you'll see him doing some more things. Look for him to give you some updates to make sure – he can give you updates on Tennessee State and those other two independents, North Carolina A&T, as well as Hampton. So check him out, uh, Sneaker uh, King, his website and page there, getting you love there. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, inside the HBC Sports Lab on Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter. I uh, still don't know what they want to call it, so I just call it Twitter. To hell with it. <laughs> HBC Sports Lab on YouTube. Dream big. Can you move forward? We'll talk with you soon. Brian? Course. Lecture. Brian? Course. Volume there. Brandon? Lecture. <laughs> Dismiss. <laughs>